Good morning, everyone. It is six o'clock, three minutes till six. And yes, I'm up. I usually don't get up until six or 6.15, depending on if everything's done the night before, 6.30. But if you're seeing this, then that means that everything went well. And today I'm actually going on a working interview. Um, I'm using a personal day at my job, so it's kind of like I'm getting paid twice for today. And I know I haven't talked to you guys in a long time about um, my job and all that's going on. I'm pretty sure you guys assumed everything was fine. And it was for a little while after I got promoted. But in this video, I will give you a story time kind of and an update on the reason why I looked for another job. And like I said, if you're seeing this, that means I got the job that I'm going to today. So wish me luck, you guys. Hi guys, Michelle here. Welcome back to my channel. And as you're already seeing in the title, I'm gonna be talking about my job and why I quit. Anyway, I know I haven't told you guys a lot about what's been going on lately. I know before I would complain about my job and I never said I wasn't thankful to have a job. I'm always thankful to have a job. I don't ever want to be to the point to where, you know, I'm not working or anything like that unless, of course, I won the lottery that I don't play. I was looking for another job before here and there, and I think I did mention that to you guys. I would go on a few interviews, and I went on a lot of interviews. I have a lot of experience in what I do, so some doctors don't want to pay you for that experience. They want to pay you really low. I have 20 years in my field. I can do front office and back office, and for those of you who are new to my channel and don't know, I am a dental assistant, and recently, well not recently, well last year at my job, I was promoted to office manager, and so I'll talk a little bit about that, but going back to before I was at my job and I was unhappy, so I would go through phases where I would look for a job and either I wasn't happy with what the doctor was trying to offer me or not every place would be the right fit, right? So they could feel that about me. Yeah, okay, whatever. And I could feel the same way about them. So it was either not the right fit or the hours wasn't right or I don't know, just something. And then I would things would get better at my job and I stopped looking. I'd go through this roller coaster and this cycle of, you know, loving my job. Well, I never loved it, but <laughs> loving where I'm at or liking where I'm at, just being satisfied to absolutely hating going to work. And some of it was where I was, the people around me. There was one person in particular who had no boundaries and when you were on break or there was one time I was on lunch in my car, they were coming to me at telling me things about work and all that and to me it's like if I'm on my unpaid lunch break or whatever, don't ask me anything about work. So then an opportunity came up for me to be office manager in another office. The big boss, he has several offices so it's a group practice, it's not a private practice which I don't like working for group practices because they're more in and out. As where private practices, the doctor is more interested in not only your mouth, but you. Learning about what you like. Oh, you've been on vacation. Oh, you know, how many kids you have, blah, 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 whatever. Bigger practices, yeah, the doctor may ask those questions, but it's mainly like, get them in, get them out. You know, like how much money can we get make today? And yes, of course, we all are there to make money. I'm not going to work for free, but at the same time, you gotta treat your patients like this is your family member in a chair, not, you know, just, oh, how much money can I get from you today? So anyway, I had the opportunity to become office manager and I accepted it because this is something that I had been wanting a long time and I know I can do it. He promised me all these things about pay raises and after 90 days this and whatever. So I did get an initial raise and the boss's assistant, which is no longer there, he quit, which should tell you a lot. A lot of people have quit. I'm the type of person I will ask, especially if it's something new that I'm doing, like the office manager position, I would ask him like, 
hey, am I doing a good job? You know, is there something I need to work on? Let me know. Pretty much he gave me the reins to run the office how I seen fit. He was like, you know what, you're doing a wonderful job. You know, if I see something, I'll let you know, but I haven't told you anything because you're doing a good job. I'm like, okay. The people there, they respected me. I had the office running pretty good. But I have gotten better and, you know, probably been great and been better at what I did, yes. But I wasn't given that opportunity because, I don't know if you guys remember, we had a thief at our job, so we fired her, but not necessarily for that part. We fired her because she was always, she was calling in like two to three days a week. So anyway, we let her go, and I don't know where the big boss, the owner of the company, I don't know where he got the idea to have this one lady, let's call her Sally, I don't know where he got the ideal to have Sally come in to help me. Now Sally works for another office in another county and let's just say no one likes her. She rubs everyone the wrong way. She's condescending. She, I guess before she used to be an assistant and then she became office manager and they said it's like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde now and you know, no one likes her. And I knew this going in, I met her before, and so, but I'm trying to be positive. I'm like, okay, well, no one's here to help me. You know, I'm always here by myself because, you know, this person is what's calling in, and this person, Sally, she's been in the field probably like 80 years because she's like 120 years old, and she probably knows a lot. I can get a lot of knowledge and learn a lot from her trying to be positive but in the back of my head I'm like this is not gonna work very well so anyway she came and maybe the first or second day was good and I'm not gonna go into complete detail because it's a whole it's a lot it's a lot so she made my life just horrible she told me oh well the big boss just wants all the offices to run the same okay I get it when it comes to patient care the system our um, computer system, um, how we schedule, things like that. But even if it's the same company, like Western Dental, okay, I don't work for Western Dental, but I'm, you know how Western Dental and Access Dental, they have multiple offices. Okay, I'm, I'm sure all their computer systems are the same, but each individual office, I'm sure little things are just different because that's just how it is, right? So I'm like, well, we're all not gonna be uniform and the same as far as that. Well, a lot of things were because it wasn't her way, it was wrong and my boss he allowed her to do this and I know I'm leaving a lot out but I would leave work I would be stressing out and I would be so mad and upset that I would cry not because you know oh boohoo she hurt my feelings no the way I am when I get really really mad and livid where I can't change the situation I cry and that's just in my personality but I'm like I'm never gonna let her see me cry or whatever and I would go before the boss's assistant left I would vent to him about this and He's like, yeah, I know, just try to stick with it. You know, she's only gonna be here until we hire someone else and then she'll go back to her other office. Well, that didn't happen. It, it just escalated and the owner of the company, the big boss, um, he told me, well, how about you just let her be acting manager for now and then, and I don't, it was just a whole lot. Like I said, I know I'm leaving a lot out. But I told him like, you know what, you gave me this position because you felt that you could trust me. I said, we made bonus since I've been there. The doctor's schedule was full. People in the back respected me. I'm getting positive feedback, not only from the boss's assistant, but from the patients, from the doctors, from the assistant. And they were like, hey, Michelle, you are a good addition to this office. We're glad you're here. So he didn't even give me a chance to be great. So once Sally took control of it, I'm like, I told my boss, are you, you know, are you demoting me? No, I'm not demoting you. I'm just, I just want her to run the office. I'm like, well, why? I said, you gave this position to me and you told me to do it how I see fit. There could be some things I can learn from her, but she's taking complete control. And it's not like things of like scheduling or I don't know, something that's clinical or something that all of the offices should be doing. It was things like, okay, when people paid in cash, 
I kept it in the envelope in my drawer and at the end of the day or the next morning I would give it to the person who I needed to give it to. So it would be things like, well, I don't want it in this drawer. I think it's better over here. So nothing that was really, you know, just mandatory or that had to be done. It was just, it wants, she wanted it done her way. And I, in the beginning we butt heads and you know, whatever, we were like oil and water. And I finally told the boss, I'm like, you know what? She can have it. Thank you for this opportunity, but I feel it's unfair to me. You didn't even give me a chance to be great. At first I thought it was just me, but the more I talked to everyone, and I didn't want to throw everyone under the bus, but no one liked her. No one could stand her. Like I said, she was she's very condescending. She'll look at you and she'll say something and she'll be smiling and you know, just whatever. And her words are just like venom. Anyway, so I gave up the position and I know I didn't tell you guys this, but I was so frustrated and I was stressed. I've been stressed out a long time and I think it had to do a lot with me not vlogging every day but I was stressed out and not really wanting to talk about it to my kids. I said a little bit whatever but I was so upset and so mad and it affected my sleeping. I don't want to have to worry about my job on Saturday or on Friday when I'm at home or you know anything like that. Then I hit the pavement, so to speak, when it came to trying to find another job. And it took me a little while. Once I gave up the position, it was like Valley was waiting for this moment. She held a staff meeting. She told them this and that and this and whatever. And this is just things that are just stupid and senseless that had nothing to do with the actual practice, but mainly how she wanted things. Because we were not getting along and my boss wasn't in my corner, he didn't have my back. The boss's assistant did. He tried to talk to him in my favor and was like, Michelle's doing a great job. Chose her, a person that no one likes. And at first I thought it was just me. And when I did talk to him, I wasn't gonna throw any, everyone under the bus like I was saying, but no one likes her, no one. And not everyone's gonna get along. So if a few people, you know, don't like each other, okay, whatever. But if every single person that I've come across and that I talk to in the company, whether it's at my office now or other offices, when they hear this person's name, they're like, anytime you talk to the big boss about this and tell him Sally this and Sally that, he gets mad and upset. And I'm like, what's really going on here? What does she have on you where you're keeping this horrible person that she was in one office and they had to move her from that office, switch office managers and put her in a different office because she was having so many problems in that office there. Moved me out of that office by my request. I'm like, give me my old job back, you know, whatever. He did not move me back to my old job. He moved me to another office, one of our other offices, which is fine, whatever. So that's where I have been since. And then when I got there, I just dug in and went on Indeed and all these other job sites and put my resume in and I've had so many interviews you guys so many interviews so I there was I was interviewing this one place and they wanted to hire me and I knew I'm like okay I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get this and so when I told him what I'm getting now you know you just seen the expression on his face just change and the interview just went south from there he's like oh, oh okay there's other applicants I'm going to interview and I'll let you know so I did get offered another position but they wanted rotating Saturdays a month. If I was at an office and if I wanted to be there working one Saturday a month, whatever, but I don't know, I just, I don't wanna work Saturdays. But a lot of the majority is doctors don't wanna pay well. When you offer me $12, and yes, $12 is a good pay for Tyreek, and I'm not saying he makes $12, but you know, I'm a single parent of three kids, I have a mortgage, I have a car, I mean, I have, all these other bills I have not made 12 bucks in many many years and I have 20 years experience doing front office and back office you are not gonna give me $12 an hour and I even had one doctor get upset with me because he's like everyone I offered the job to everyone wants more money what can I say who, who could live on 12 bucks you know I had a working interview 
yesterday. I felt really good about it. They needed someone with a lot of experience or whatever. And when she called me, she was very positive. You know, come down now, whatever. And I told her, I'm at work now, but I'm not dressed for an interview. Because usually when I go to interviews, I like to dress well and wear heels. You know, not the heels that I wear to church or anything open toe. Just something business and something nice. Well, I had on sandals. I had on my saltwater sandals and was just dressed how I normally dress for work. And she said, we don't care. Just come down. People come in scrubs for their, you know, interviews, whatever. So just come on down. So I went to the interview. This was last week. And she really liked me. And I'm like, this sounds positive. And then when we got to talking about, you know, what they offer as far as benefits, I'm like, wow. And a 401k, not very many dental offices offer a 401k plan, but they do. And so then when we got to the part where we were talking about hourly wage, I'm like, here we go. And so then she told me, and I'm like, what, wait, come again, what, what? And she said it again, I'm like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm trying to compose myself at that time, hoping that she didn't see the surprise in my eyes. I'm like, okay, yeah, that number's good with me. That was last week. So yesterday I had a working interview and I let my skills shine. You know, I am pretty good at what I do. And I know I was doing front office, whatever, but I do have a license to work in the back. And that's what I did for years. And I was good at it. So I'm like, you know what, why not? I was gonna accept the first position that was offered to me, whether it be front or back, but the price had to be right. Pretty much new by lunchtime yesterday. I'm like, I'm gonna get this because the doctor is so amazing and so cool. Like, dude, you're rocking out. Just so down to earth, everyone at that office. So when the end of the day came, um, they were like, don't take off yet. And so we actually talked for about an hour after the patients were done or whatever. So probably like 15 minutes in the conversation, she was like, well, you know, I'm just gonna put it out there. I would like to offer you the position. And I'm like, I'll take it. So then we started talking about, you know, when I was going to start and, you know, stuff like that. So yes, you guys, I'm so happy. And once she offered me the position, I just felt like a weight lift off my shoulders and the stress that I've been having for a while now, for months. I, like I said, I know I never told you guys, it just lifted. So I gave my notice at work today. And my boss, he has a history of when people give their two weeks notice, he will, and he's never said this, but he'll get offended, right? And he'll just give them their check and let them go. He said, well, they don't wanna be here. I don't want them here. So whatever, yeah, he'll give them this check and let them go. So I was actually expecting him to do that today and he didn't. And I'm like, well, maybe he's gonna do it on Monday. I don't know, whatever, pay me not to be there. I don't care. A lot of people have gone. So when I was looking for a job before, I could not wait to tell you guys everything, like things that are happening at the job with it now and who's sleeping with who, yeah. And all this, all this stuff, right? And I even wrote it down like a list of, I'm gonna let them know this, I'm gonna let them know that, this and that, this and that. But you know what, now that I look back on it, it's not worth it. It's totally not worth it. I'm getting out of a toxic environment that I tried to make a home and it wasn't working. And um, the place where I'm going to is not a big corporation. It's a small practice and everyone seems happy. I don't know exactly when I'm gonna put this video up. I don't know, I may wait until the day I start there or I may not. I don't know, we shall see. I don't know if you guys will see vlogs of me at the new office if I'm ever there alone I'll show you guys the new office yeah I'm I'm just overjoyed and I'm so thankful to God and I've been praying about you know the situation that happened and I'm so glad the stress is lifted and not saying that you know every office is perfect every office is not perfect and you're not gonna get along with everyone, and I haven't been in a place where everything was perfect. Well, I take that back. There was one dental office in the past, and of course, before I started vlogging, that I wish I would've never left. I left because I got burnt out working in dentistry, and I thought, oh, I'm gonna do medical billing. I should've never did that. So I left the office there, and everyone, we were, we were all like family, and because we have to have 
CE units for our license. We went to the conventions together, which the doctor would pay for. We actually didn't mind being together after hours. Here, not so much. Um, a lot of things where they went, I was like, nope, because just nope and the boss he really likes to drink so everything's centered around alcohol and that's fine for him but I don't do it I like he'll go to bars and he'll invite everyone like after work and he'll pay for everything fine and dandy for them but I don't drink and so I'm sorry I'm not gonna go so just things like that and plus it's a very it was a very toxic environment and the boss the way he is is he comes across very like he wants to help you and oh I'll do anything I have an open door talk to me blah 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 but he's not he's not let me just leave it at that so yeah you guys I'm so happy and I think the place where I'm going to I think it's going to be the start of a beautiful friendship because the doctor is 35 and see that's another thing okay so when I was looking for a job because my boss now where I am now he owns several practices so I of course I'm not gonna give the name of the practice I ever see this video I don't want to ever have them say talking bad about them or slander or anything like that but I'm pretty sure it's, it's going to get big um, because that's the way he's headed. A lot of people have been leaving and then we will get new people. And it's like, you wanna tell them, be cautious of this, you know, watch out for this, watch out for that. But how can you tell that to somebody who are, is excited they got a job and you know, their perception of it may not be what mine is, may not be what this person is or that person is, but uh, nine times out of 10, they end up, all of our thoughts are pretty much the same about the company. So when I first started, the office that I was at, there was this guy working and he was upset at how things had was turning out and of course I'm new so I'm like I'm not listening to you you know um, I'm trying to keep my job and you know he would talk about the boss and this and this and that and of course at this time I did not see this so he found another job gave us two weeks notice once again the boss just said you know here's your check and go okay he gave him a two-week vacation with, with with pay whatever the guy he went to the other office to work months later when my boss was looking for other offices to buy guess whose office he bought yes the office where this guy who was at my office went and we were like, oh my goodness, you're being sucked in again. So he tried to stay there and tried to make things work, but he pretty much knew. And then he got a job somewhere else. That was my fear of this job. I didn't want to get to a practice where the doctor was older or like in his 60s or 70s or even 50s because even though 50s is not old, I didn't want to be in a position where my boss could come by the practice because my doctor that I'm working with now is retiring. So the doctor that I'm working with now is younger than me and I don't have to worry about that, you know, so I think I'm going to be happy there. I'm just speaking positivity, putting it out there, putting it out there. This is going to be a good place. And yeah, I'm, this is just, this is going to be a good thing. So yeah, you guys, that's the story even though I didn't tell you guys every detail I'd be here forever this is probably already a long video so do me a favor before you leave please subscribe if you haven't already and I'll talk to you guys in my next video bye